this podcast comes with a listener warning. Definitely adult topics, definitely adult language, and you should never listen to this episode with your parents or your children in the car. Today's guest on the podcast is Lauren Zander. She's back, and it was a fabulous interview. If you like really uncomfortable interviews, (laughs) because... Oh my gosh, I thought it would be really fun to say, let's talk about me. And so we did. Dun, dun, dun. For those of you who haven't listened to episode 16, you should. That episode is the first time that I spoke with Lauren. And we had a great time, and she made me very uncomfortable then. And so nothing has really changed. But Lauren is the co founder of the Handel Group, and she does life and business coaching. But she's a whole nother level, and you will understand that as soon as you listen to this episode. She's also the author of the book, Maybe It's You, and that title pretty much sums it up. Like, maybe a lot of our problems are ourselves and us getting in our own way. So yeah, this episode, I think it has to have several disclaimers. Number one, there's some language, which I would put up on the explicit uh, checkbox on iTunes, which is fine. But there's also some, um, and, and Lauren would say, like, Meredith, this is you being <laughs> like, this is me having my own issues about all sorts of stuff that I would even put a disclaimer on this episode. But it has a disclaimer because it was uncomfortable for me. And you will understand once you listen. So that is the other disclaimer. Don't listen with your kids in the car. There is some adult conversation and some language. And um, don't listen with your parents either, which is actually quite the opposite of what Lauren would tell me. She would say, listen with your parents in the car and listen with your children in the car. Okay, maybe not young children. But anyway, you will get all these funny jokes when you check out the episode. So I hope you all enjoy this episode with the amazing Lauren Sander. Welcome to the Same 24 Hours Podcast with Meredith Atwood. We all have the same 24 hours each day, and it's what we do with those hours that makes all the difference between our health, happiness, and success. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Same 24 Hours Podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Atwood. Today, we have a return guest. Hi, Lauren. Hey there. (laughs) All right. So, Lauren, your official name. Do you go by the whole thing? Oh, oh, I'm like, (laughs) what? I'm like thinking you're about to give me a good nickname. I'm like, do it. (laughs) Um, Oh, you want mine? So, it's it's Lauren Zander. And my maiden name is Handel. And so, I, I started the company with my sister. So, but it's really Lauren Zander. Okay, got it. So yes. you are on episode 16, and now we are in the 90s in my episode. Ooh. So yeah, you were like one of the pioneers. <laughs> oh, I love that. And also, I think you might be one of the top three downloads. So people really oh. love, loved your episode, and I did too. So welcome oh. back. Flattery will get you everywhere. It will. Thank it will. you. I heard that lies will too. <laughs> Allies are definitely very much the original point to what's wrong with the human race. Oh, my gosh. So if you guys haven't (laughs) listened to episode 16, go listen to it because I don't want to cover the same things we did in the first one. However, I do want to mention that one of the things that was so striking about Lauren and her book at the time, it was a new book. I guess it's still new because it's, you know. It's your book, and it always feels new. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only getting older. So right. it's as young. It's like like us, we're as young as we'll ever be today. That's right. That's right. So is the book. <laughs> the book. The book. Maybe it's you, meaning maybe you're the problem with everything in your life. <laughs> Yes, but please, please understand. Maybe it's me was always the first line I ever, I ever had to understand before I made any changes. Right, right. And one of the fundamental points of the book was kind of getting, well, not kind of, but telling all your truths and telling, actually telling all your lies, (laughs) all the things you've lied about. So let's talk about that as a starting point because it's so shocking, and I need a re, I need a refresh on that. (laughs) Yeah. So we're fake. We're fake. <laughs> Humans are fake. We are, we are, we, and we're fake and we have a nickname for it. And our nickname for it in Handel land, it is snaky nice. Like you have to be nice and you're not allowed to tell the truth. I can't tell you if I like your hair today from the smallest of things to the real biggies. 
ways, right? Like, yeah, I took the car, mom, or I cheated on that exam, or I kissed the, I kissed the boy. And yes, I had a boyfriend, right? So there's all the things we do in life that, um, if anybody knew we'd get in a lot of trouble. Right. And there's all the things everybody else did to you that if you knew them, they'd be in a lot of trouble and pretty much no one's talking about all the lies, but it isn't because everyone isn't capable or lying. And then everyone's lying about being able to lie. And then, right. So it's just this obvious shit show in the nicest way I can say that right. about all of us. Right. In, and then even worse, it's like posturing that we have integrity because I don't want to hurt you. And why should I tell you something that's going to hurt you? And, you know, isn't that for me? Like, oh, my God, the way humans lie about lying and then that making it a, <laughs> and make it a virtue. Not, and even in AA, right, like going and telling someone someone something you did that actually could destroy another person's life. But that life is already a cover up and destroyed, right? Like that husband of yours that I cheated with was cheating on you too, lady, right? So the whole world, even in programs that teach integrity, get very fishy when it comes to the truth about lying. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the pitch. Why tell the truth when there's so much evidence for not telling the truth? And many, 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 many reasons why right? That we all are basically bought into it as a society. Right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm listening. Go. I'm taking notes Here this time because I, yeah, I haven't told all my lies. <laughs> no one has. I have, right? Like the, right. And trust me, the weather's great, right? So one thing that happens if you tell all your lies is you can hear everybody else's. It's literally like amazing, right? You can hear how much bullshit every sentence is packed with and every nuance and innuendo is packed with, yeah. oh, I meant to be there, you know, right? Like every little sentence, I can hear every lie. So one is it changes your ability to listen once you've told the whole truth. But the other thing that happens is when you stick your hand in fire, you get burnt and you really learn a lesson, right? You really learn the lesson. Um, but when you never get burned, you never will learn the lesson. So for all the ways humans get away with all the ways they lie, they never learn the lesson, right? right? So there's, right. And so if you're still eating that cookie, you're still 20 pounds overweight, you're still not getting the job you want, you still haven't found the love of your life, you're on your second divorce, you're blaming, you're at, like, if you start, you go, well, where did this mess come from? Because in my mind, I, I have this good heart. And the truth is, I even believe you do. But if I start to get you to see all the ways you've been lying and defend your lying, you will find out you don't know yourself. You haven't been true to yourself. Mm. You and, and the trajectory of a fake life versus the trajectory of an honest life are two totally different trajectories. And I, I don't, I like need to teach it to people to understand it, but I can figure out if wherever you are in your life, I could start to figure out all the lies. Like I could start telling you what you lie about. Like I could go backwards because lying is the way we're fake. Fake makes you a puppet. You're your own puppet in your own head. You don't necessarily like yourself. You don't even know yourself. You don't even know how you really feel because you haven't been training yourself to be truthful because the only way you can really be truthful is if you tell the truth and then you get whacked, yeah. but not whacked so you lie, right? right? Whack so you learn how to not do that or learn the lesson. Like it's such a different road. If I had a bucket of sand, mm. I would put my head in it right now. <laughs> I know. Um, now here's the really good news, <laughs> even though it is not good news. And right. I keep, I keep pretending it is. Um, here's, it's kind of sick, interesting news. Birds of a feather flock together. So whatever kind of lies you think are like, really you're going to the grave with and are special to you. If you think the person, you're a husband, you think your kids, you think your mother, you think your best friend, you think the birds you're flying with are different than you, I want you to know something. They're not. You're all basically posturing very similarly. Mm -hmm. And so if you start to tell the truth, 
like, let me tell you, you know, what I masturbate to. Let me tell you what I do. Let me tell you how I do this. You will find out that you are not alone, but you are more together. That is almost a comedy to me at this point. Right. I would I right? believe you. Yeah. Right. And, and so then what happens is, is there's this spiritual breakthrough that is available to all of us, but only through telling the truth and discovering that the person across from you, like the one you really love, has a pack of lies too, mm -hmm. right? It's, 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 uh, it's the condition. So we're all lying to ourselves and we yes. have to learn to be true to ourselves. But what yes. does that process look like? And where did the lies start? I mean, we st they started very young, right? Oh, my God. They start like, I, I mean, I remember really being floored that my child, like the minute they learned language at all, like, it, like, like not many words. It was like a two-year-old or a three-year-old, right? She looked at me. I know she had a cookie. You know why? She had crumbs all over her face, <laughs> right? And the chocolate was still there. And I look at her and I go, did you have a cookie? And, you know, she wasn't supposed to go get the cookie. She know, like, it's not like the cookies are not like, let me go get cookies for breakfast. Right. And so she had a cookie all over her face. And guess what she said to me? <laughs> no, mama. <laughs> no. And I was like, come on. And I, I literally like had to walk her to a mirror <laughs> laughing. I'm like, honey, come with me, honey. Come here. Let me show you something. See? <laughs> I see. Right? And she, it was like, whoa. Blow her little brain on a concept of like her face keeps evidence. Right? 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 And like never even understood it was a lie. It, 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 we, it's like, you know, the, the fantasy that humans come out sweet and good and innocent, right, is, is, you know, no, they come out exactly like everybody else, okay? <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, I've got two kids. Learning to tell the truth, I think, is one of the most spiritual paths. Like, it is the spiritual path. Learning to face all the ways you lie and have a sense of humor about how you lie is the only way to know your own dark side. And if anybody thinks they don't have one, and that's like thinking someone else doesn't have one. Oh, you think everybody else has one, but you don't, <laughs> right? It's like, it's, it's a funny phenomenon to get a human to pin the tail on its own donkey. <laughs> its own donkey. That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so I am, let's talk about me. <laughs> My current struggle, and I have been doing this get to know myself venture for eight years. I can't. Yes. not. And I feel like I am the closest I've ever been to really facing all my Aww. bullshit. Like I quit drinking because yeah. I, yeah. I had a raging alcohol problem that <laughs> I finally admitted, you know, I was like, you know stuff like that. But yes. one thing that is forever plaguing me is yeah. food. Okay. Yeah. Food. Yeah. It is, it is the biggest bullshit in my life. And I have been doing so, so very well with tracking. Cause I would lie in my food journal. This was another mm -hmm. episode I talked about, oh, yeah. but I would lie to myself in my food journal about what I ate. Like it was bad. And so when I started realizing, okay, this is ridiculous. Um, I, I really made some great progress just with, you know, not being a jackass when it comes to food. And I thought, um. I thought two weeks ago, you know, I think I'm, I think I've got this. I think I've finally come to a great place with myself and I'm not binge eating and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm four days into like pizza and ice cream and I don't know what happened. You know what okay. I mean? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I, why am I, why am I going into this okay. behavior? <laughs> okay. You know? All right. Well, I have bad news for you. <laughs> Shit, Lauren. <laughs> um, so first of all, please understand that my, my, like my group, my best friend in the whole wide world, like my favorite people in the whole wide world are addicts. And they're, an addict has the main area they're an addict in, like the, the mama of it all. Um, but if you think that the addict does, like the nature of the addict doesn't roll into other areas, it's the same beast. You literally have to understand that addicts are gonna like so the person who finally stopped drinking is now gonna overeat or gonna do it here or they're gonna overspend or they're gonna like it vice is a way to um act out the you know you could say the dark side mm -hmm. in all of us 
okay? And then to whatever degree your parents had it, which one was, who was the addict, mom or dad? Um, you know, it's, I don't think either of my parents really, but the, I have lots of family okay, history. Great. There's lots of people. Okay, great. So that you just said, that is the first big problem. Because <laughs> one of them is. A hundred percent, right? That It does not, like, you go, you know how you're like brown eye, brown eyes, yeah. right? And then you, then both grandparents better have blue eyes or, you know what I mean? Right. Or else we're in, like one of them better or else it's not your kid. Mm -hmm. Right. Like the, like genetics don't lie. Okay. So you're giving me neither one of your parents were addicts, but now you're going back to the grandparents and that's really not how this thing rolls. Yeah. It really doesn't roll that way. And a child of an alcoholic, right. Or right. Has all the same tendencies and they really do have where they're being an addict. So it more would make, I would more have to start to chase down what you're not considering an addict. Right. No, I, I get that. And that would definitely be my dad's side uh, and my dad. Um, it wasn't alcohol, but I think it could have been. He just chose to put that down pretty early. Okay. Um, is your dad still alive? Yes. Honest to God, it means you don't know your parents well enough. <laughs> right. You don't know their sex life. You don't no, know their I behavior. Don't. I, well, okay. I don't want to know that, Lauren. Oh, you do. No. <laughs> the human race <laughs> makes me crazy. The that. human ma- I do okay. not want to know okay. that. Like the dogs poop. You know, dogs poop. No. Human <laughs> Humans poop, right? We poop. Poop right? fine. Dogs eat. Humans eat. Dogs. So, can I curse? Am I allowed to yes. curse? Yes. Dogs fine. fuck. Humans fuck. Where there's an awkwardness about understanding things is where the lies live. Right. Right. Okay. (laughs) And so the best way to stop the awkward and the really like um, dysfunctional underground way we all interact with life is by having there be transparency and no secrets. Right. If you like, so the person who has three drinks a day, if they're not embarrassed, ashamed, they're not doing it in lunch, as long as there's no secret to your behavior and everybody watches and can react and have whatever judgment they want to have, it's cool. Do you understand? I don't teach morality in that way. I teach trans. I teach transparency. Mm-hmm. Okay, and and so the more you like, you don't still know where your addict came from. And then the breakthrough in it really in putting something to rest is that there isn't this mystery that still is unresolved. So when I teach hauntings hauntings haunt us because we don't know the full story and then we stay in a spiritual purgatory because we don't we're not to the bottom of the story so it's like when you find that when someone loses someone and they died you know we're like in some way you don't know they stay haunted in the situation until they know all the facts so then they can resolve and mourn and learn the right lessons even though they're terrible whatever they are right Mm -hmm. But what happens with us is if we never get to the bottom of the story, we never have the resolution and understanding that's very much um, resolution and learning and growth. Yeah. So, So being an addict or someone that needs to get sober, right, means that there is a trail back to your parents that until I know all those facts and kind of get that resolved, there is a level to the boogeyman that's still going to be rocking your world. I almost can get you free from your food addict, from understanding your parents' addict better. Like it, it actually could stop the bleeding. I don't, I can't guarantee that because once an addict, yeah, like, and, and what addicts all have in common, which you already started speaking about, is lying. Like what do all addictions have in common is a pretense right? You can't know what I'm doing with my, you know, sexually, financially, booze, what, like no one gets to know. And you're, and it's just you and your inner dialogue, like you and this self that doesn't feel safe that it's saying whatever it's saying to itself. And so the next thing you don't know is what you're saying to yourself about food, right? So my joke about food is I don't let food talk to me. Food and I broke up a long time ago, (laughs) right? I do not, we do not discuss things. I do not talk. Like food is like the worst boyfriend I ever had, right? Who just wants to molest me. Like bad boyfriend. (laughs) You're a bad boyfriend, right? And then I, but I had to write my own lot, like in my book or in Inner You, my digital program, there's the ways to purge 
you really need to get to know your subconscious and then you really have to hear your inner dialogue. And then as someone who has a history of being an addict, you should bet it's like, I want money, I want sex, and I want food. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't maybe want all those three from you. I want all of them. Right. And then, right. I really do. Like, I want to know if you, cause, cause those are the places, the dark side, the vice business wants to have. It's like, leave me alone. I'll do it my way. Yeah. Right. Well, it's always like, one. Like I can't, if it's, you know, if I'm eating well or yeah, it's always one, I'm, I'm doing something else destructive over here. <laughs> It doesn't matter. I never just have my full shit together. It drives me crazy. Yes, but um, it's not. There's there's real breakthroughs you need to have that could spiritually shift everything. And I really mean knowing where, like, understanding your parents better and resolving your lies that you've never cleaned up. Or mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you have no idea how much power to be present comes from not having the subconscious undertow. Yeah, there really is a subconscious undertow. And what you've gotten away with has a toe. <laughs> right. It's just got a toe. Right. It does. And you so no matter how good you are, you're overcompensating, even if it's just one lick of your kids frosting. Right. It, it reminds you that you're nowhere. Right. It, it, it. So I teach personal integrity because it's it's presence of mind as if your soul was, was great. Not like I deserve a lick. Like I didn't even notice, right? Like the way we bullshit ourselves right. versus like, are you kidding? You can't get, my husband ready for this in, in the area of food, right? I love to eat, be clear, right? I, and then the way I eat is so I can eat a lot. Mm hmm and and not and then I don't eat anything else except what I'm allowed to eat so I can eat in volume right and then I love what I eat because that's an act of consciousness right enjoying like wiring my mind to be in love with what's actually good for me is such a fun art so there's a variety of steps I would take you through with your body one, purge your whole history with how you've dealt with food in your body. Women, especially, are lunatics, yeah. right? Right? We, we're never pretty enough. We're never skinny enough. We're never this enough. And even when you go back and you see pictures from high school and you're like, dang, you were cute. Right. Right? You were like, I thought I was fat. <laughs> true. So I mean, true. like, I wish I was that fat again. <laughs> right, do you understand? Yeah. But that's, that's because we don't know ourselves and we're, we're, we have epigenetic issues. Epigenetic issues are your mother's lineage, like eat mother and father about body, right? So like you don't want to talk to your mother about her sex life, I want you to talk to her about her eating, her body issues. Like I want you to understand your mother and father profoundly because it's like you would want to know their DNA history because if your mother had breast cancer, you better know it changes what you'll eat and act like. Epigenetics screams that emotional behavior is just as real as DNA behavior. Hmm. So it, that's a really interesting. My mother, um, I actually know a lot about my parents with regard to like eating habits and, and, and that kind of stuff. I mean, my mom was one of the lucky ones who was just tall and thin, and she just never had to deal with food. She could eat whatever she wanted. Okay, um, just so you know. The odds of that really being true, that she never snuck food, that she never had moments where she would, you, it's just not the truth about a woman. It's just mm. not the truth. You did not just tell me the truth. Well, that is the, okay. So that that's, is. That's, that's, do you understand? She just looks like that woman completely. Okay. So she, yeah, I don't know her then. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, I have you like, ever... That's what she's let me believe though. I, uh, yeah. Thank you. Th my mother and then I was, was one of the greatest. Little... Calling it like she could eat whatever she wants. So when you finally saw her eat that one meal, if you go, what else did you eat today, mom? Right? Unless you go, what did you eat today? Every day, you don't know what a person's eating. And then do you understand? It's so much more interesting than trust people telling you the truth. Uh, well, see that. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know where to go from there because like, I'm sorry. My whole, no, <laughs> no because, I need you know, to interview your mother. 
would be a great. We should get my parents on. Oh, oh my gosh. Come I just on. no, it would be terrible. I would get. It would two not be terrible. It would. The so when you go interview your parents, right? You're not doing them to catch them. You're doing it to love them. Like I like with my mother, right? Mom, like my mommy, right? I love my mommy. And I'm literally like, mom, you are the most, like you gave birth to me. Every bit of you matters to me. And I don't want you to protect anything of your story. And I will never make, like, I will never hold it against you. I will never, like, I would rather know every bit of you than judge you for any of it. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm a little snarky, so we might make fun of each other. But other than that, can I know everything? Right. Um, and then I started to interview, you know, I found my mother who was in the, what was it? She was in the forties or fifty. right? She's 82 now. Mm -hmm. you, I know when my mother gave her first blowjob and trust me, it wasn't when she was pinned to college. It was back in high school and early in high school. <laughs> right. Like everyone's like, Oh, not your mother. My mother was not the one that looked like the slut. Right. She got pinned and looked like the virgin, right? And if you ask her her eating habits and her relationship to how she looked in the mirror, you think she's not going to sound like a woman? So I, the biggest problem is we pretend that we didn't inherit everything, like actually closer than you think. I don't like you, Lauren. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, 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 do you understand? I'm like dancing on every grave, but more, to but more to make a party. Like, ladies. I don't want to go to your party either. <laughs> you do. Nobody has to lie. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so I, I, I have to interview my parents. That's all great. Now, how do oh, I? Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> right. Okay, how about this? Let's just, can I quiz you? I mean, it's, it's, yeah. can, I talk, can I talk about sex? Are we okay? Yeah, I don't, well, okay. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I was in ninth grade when I gave my first blowjob. And you? Oh, God. I can't tell this on the podcast. Okay. Why? Um, I, that's what I know. It, either that or explain why you can't. Because I of still my think... parents. It's exactly. Fault. Oh, my. Are they listening? <laughs> they will. They are. Okay. Oh, so let me tell you my parents. My parents gave birth to me and they put me in the center of their universe and then they hovered over me for 40 years. They still hover. I love them. They're good people, but they're hoverers. And, and, in that hovering, they tried to marionette me into not making all the mistakes that I don't know they made, but they know they made, and yes. they want to make sure I don't make. But in that realm, because I have been marionetted my whole life, I know the kind of mistakes that they potentially made. You need, it's <laughs> Such time. Such as blowjobs. <laughs> okay, it's time to go. Humans are not rated PG. They're just not rated PG. They're rated R or X. Right. I'm very, and, and I think, you know, honestly, if I sat down with my dad, he would tell me everything. He's told okay. me a lot. He's told me a lot more than my mom has. Um, it's, it's, but you're a grown up. You've had babies. Let's, let's do this quiz. Have you, as far as your parents know, or you know, have your parents ever really been alive before? Have my parents been alive? Before. Do they know what they're oh. doing? Is this their first rodeo <laughs> oh, as, no. as far no. as they know? It is. So it was their first sex life, their first time being parents, right. their first time covering up what they don't want their kids to know. It's like, why would you ever think your parents are geniuses? Do you think the generation before was smarter emotionally or not smarter emotionally? Not smarter. Okay, great. So as you sit here and play dumb to mm -hmm. wanting to know everything or understand your parents, you're the new generation. Like okay. I pray, you understand? It's no, like the, I get it. I don't want to know. I want to fix it, it for my daughter. <laughs> okay. First of all, okay. We have, I, did, I, once upon a time, this is a true story. Now, first of all, you have to understand my father is an Orthodox Jewish man. Does he sound like a fun guy to have talks about <laughs> sex with? Okay. Does that sound like fun? And you understand his dad was even goofier. Right. Right. Like started the temple, right? Holocaust, like, a, you know, like really not, they did not talk about sex. Okay. It was not that cool in my house ever. Okay, it, the amount of making my parents talk about sex and tell the truth and get everything out was me 
wanting to love and understand humanity mm-hmm. and and stop having the delusion illusion that keeps everybody apart. Right. It's literally why the priests can molest the children is because no one talks about it. No one's clear about sex. Mm-hmm. No, it's 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 underground. And everyone's ashamed of it. Just And you're like, how old do you think you are when you're going, I don't want to know, mommy and daddy. It's like a, my eight-year-old. Yeah. But that's because, I mean, <laughs> definite sex in my household and culture and church, we, it was very churchy until like maybe 20 years ago. It was very shameful. Like, that doesn't mean everybody wasn't having orgasms, honey. Right. No, that's true. But that's it's where just it a from. lie. So you can understand. It doesn't mean everyone. Right. It doesn't mean right. men no, like, but... oh, I guess your dad was the guy who wasn't jerking off, but everybody else with a penis does. Right. Oh, it's, for it's... sure. For sure. Okay. We have to stop being in denial. Right. This is denial. And you're a grown up. I really understand whatever people want to manage to children. Do you understand? Like, okay, you don't want to tell your 13 year old everything? Fine. Right? You like like I understand a child's mind is developing, but what excuse do you have with your parents now that you're, you know, yeah. not not 17 anymore? I think I just don't want to freaking deal with it. I don't want to know. I don't I just want to move on. You know what I mean? <sighs> I don't want to but like I, Ugh. But I'm I get, sorry. I get, I, no, no, no. It's, I, this is good. This is what you do. <laughs> and then I just good. want you to know, and then I, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> Great. I have a surprise for you. You know how in time, the moments you did something you didn't want to do? Yeah. And it was like, a, it, those are the triumph moments. Mm-hmm. And that like, if I go back through the list of like breakthroughs you've ever had in your life, right? They will go back to pushing yourself past some awkward, uncomfortable, risk-taking moment. And then it, it like rocked, right? Yeah. yeah. You know those yeah. moments, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I swear having these deep conversations with your mom and your dad ha- cause a breakthrough of intimacy and friendship and real love between a parent and a child and then becoming grownups together and and really, like we did, we do life together. We die together. We get buried together, right? It it's like a it's so much better than the way you have it organized right now. <laughs> the way I have it organized, touche. That's nice. That's good. Okay, so would would talking with my children? Yes. Let's let's, let's put my parents and back in the fold over here. Let's put talk them about back. Them. Wait, wait. Back put them there. back in the button to the top, sleeves down to the bottom, and everybody folder. dressed like no skin allowed. No yes. skin allowed folder. Yes, that folder. <laughs> so I'm very different with my children. We are oh. very open with them. This is a full mm. naked house. This is whatever. Oh. And and so my son, he just turned eleven. And my parents were up a couple of weeks ago and I said, yeah, I mean, I can't believe he's going to be a teenager in a couple of years and we're going to be changing the sheets every day. And I said that at the table and James looked at me, he's my son, he started laughing. Like he got it. He got the joke and my parents were horrified. And so that's how we talk. We are very open about what is coming down the masturbatory pipeline. I know? am very proud of you. So- just go- I just got one more generation for you to go. <laughs> One more time. But so I'm trying to do it differently. That's awesome. But isn't that interesting of you to even know how awkward your parents made it for you and how that's the very thing you don't want to do to your children? Right. That's, that's, that's pretty fascinating, right? Because if you so thought your parents' dynamic, right, like that pedestal that they stay on that has like their virginity intact of some kind and you won't break the the boundary, but you will totally break it with your children is for me is miraculous, right? Like, yay you. And then really interesting that it's just like you wanted to go that direction, not the other direction. Yeah. I'm well, and I'm so far in the opposite direction that my husband's like, you've, you've got to rein it in. We still have to oh. parent because <laughs> I'm like, whatever. Sure. You know, cause I have a rule. You can cuss in the house. You just can't cuss outside at school, but in the house and it must be used appropriately. Like, you know, you, you can't use the word shit inappropriately. It has to be well context and with you oh. know, vigor. And, oh, oh, I, I think you need, know. I need, I think you need to really sit those parents down. <laughs> 
I think I think it's okay. I think cursing <laughs> has got out the bag, right? Like I, we're, we're lo- like you know, really? No, you, no well, you know, I still it's re- can't cuss. I do though right. because now I'm an adult, and I but I didn't cuss in front of my parents until like maybe five years ago. I think that a lot of your issues that would have you still having food issues and the attic still really roaming is. So if you think about, okay, watch, okay. So now, now you're making a lot more sense to me, okay? Because it's to to commit to a food plan and to really care is is who you are, right? You 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 get that about yourself, yeah. right? Not everybody's right. committing to a food plan. Not everybody really cares, right? Not it. Not not everybody cares to lie in their food journal. <laughs> I want to make that's myself a, proud, right? Like that's a lot of commitment, right? right? Right. But there's something very immature about the the relationship. Like it goes a little young right there. Like, what am I lying for? Even to myself. So I look good to who? To me. <laughs> yes. But if you think if you for me, the distortion is right here with your parents. Like it's yeah. so I can connect that dot so easily now because you're very young about addressing your parents and you're very young, you're not young about, like, if you don't think cursing is right, that's one thing. Then you wouldn't curse in front of anybody. Right. But when you, when you think you don't have a problem cursing with your husband, cause you like to, and then you don't have a problem cursing here. Right. But when you start to compartmentalize, which is different than if you're on television, like I will ask if I can curse, right? right. This is your show. That's different. But you are managing like appearances right? versus building an authentic relationship, mm-hmm. right? Like you get that, right? Like, so yeah. you're not equal to your parents. Your parents are still up on a pedestal and you're still a 10 year old. Yeah. And then are you being a 10 year old in the way you handle your food journal? I still hear a 10 year old there. And then now I can connect those dots. That's when I started Weight Watchers, Lauren. That's when I was put on my first diet. Did I just freeze right then (laughs) with my Um, relationship with food? (laughs) I think it's really true, right? Like the minute you're not allowed to tell the truth and make your own choices and then you're going to sneak or or be managed, um, love and management sneaking, right, become you know, the teacher, the authority, the, the, the whole dynamic and cycle you stay stuck in, like that's a normal relationship, even though it's abnormal. Yeah. Right. It feels normal. This is why a person can, you know, pick out the one guy that's going to be abusive to them. And it really does remind them of their daddy, but you can't, like, they don't see that because, you know, it's not exactly the same at all. Right. And I haven't spoken to my dad in 10 years. Right. So they like they don't understand that you can't get out of, you know, the subconscious dynamics unless you did the work. And the only way I know to do the work is really to go study it and go free your lies and go have all those conversations and even negotiate with your parents about cursing. (laughs) Right. So you know I curse, guys. Yes. Do you really need me to not curse in front of you? So, and you guys, ne- you guys never curse. You want me to never curse in front of you out of respect for you. But you understand I curse. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. For you, because I love you, I won't curse. Okay. Right? That's a negotiation with someone. Right? Now, in regards to where they're an addict and where their history and the truth about them right? That's like, hey, guys, I want to have this one deep conversation with you so I get to love you and know you fully to know myself better. I think I really need you to, you know, bear bear with me through this whole conversation and tell me the truth. Mm-hmm. Because it's really important for me to grow up and be myself and know myself better. Right? So I think that that is really actually your DNA information. Yeah. Versus cursing is really... You know, if I invite a vegetarian over for dinner, it doesn't mean I won't eat a piece of fish and I'll serve you veggies, right? Like I don't owe you not eating fish. Yeah. So it's all very fascinating, but all of that comes from real intimacy and talking about it all. I'm terrified of, I don't know why I'm terrified of real intimacy with my parents. I think it's because I just don't want to disappoint them because they work so hard to make sure that I did everything right. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I really think it's just like, oh, I don't want to bum you out. They really no. screwed this up. <laughs> it's um, you're still getting whatever praise you want from them. You're still getting whatever they give you that makes you feel like that's worth it. Mm, yeah. So the reason, you know, if you go back to my little two-year-old who had the cookie on her face, right? And you go, you know, there's no question why she lied about the cookie. She knew she couldn't have one, right? She knew that. She knew she snuck downstairs, went to the, the, the bag and took one, right? Like she knows what she did. She didn't ask. She like was a genius in that moment, right? Right. right? And so then she, then she knew that if I figured it out, she'd be in trouble. Right. And so that none of that is surprising. Right. So if you take the same kind of logic and you go, gee, why do you like the relationship the way it is? Why don't you want like, why are you still lying and not going deep? Right. Well, then they can't ask you. You can't disappoint. They can't they can't disappoint you. Mm -hmm. Like it keeps this illusion delusion totally in place and then you guys call it love and proper right and and it's really a bunch of pretense and lies in the nicest way you can say that yeah right no different than why was my kid trying to get away with eating the cookie yeah i mean i would have a huge sense of relief if i and i don't know i guess it would help at this stage in my life but i know it would have really helped me at say 15 you know when it really when I was trying to figure out who I was and obviously clearly I don't still know who I am, but you, um, know, you might not have been an alcoholic, honey. Oh, that's, I, how, yeah. that's how, if, if you started telling the truth early, yeah, I've you come might, to that conclusion. Yeah, I, so, I've come to that I'm conclusion sorry. over the last year that had, yeah. Had I just been able to like say the things I wanted to say, <laughs> then well, yeah. I probably wouldn't have drank to quiet. All yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, I, you might not have gone to law school. You might not have done like <laughs> what, have, yeah. right. I, yeah. Most, you know, most lawyers have this, like you almost, I could literally go into law schools and being like, are you doing this for your parents? Right. Like <laughs> there's many professions that are literally like, who is this for you or your parents? Right? right. And, and so the please your parents dynamic in a human, right if you go, where does that come from, Lauren, right? Like, where does that come from? Um, it's actually because most parents aren't that happy in their own lives. Right. And then they, they put the, the, you're the, you're the light of my life. I did everything for you. Now you have to do everything for me. Burden on a kid. Yep. And it really is because they ain't getting laid. They're not having fun. They don't even <laughs> like each other. Right. They're like, they're sneaking booze, right? Like, where's the, like, someone start to figure out the truth here. Okay. Yeah. I swear we didn't invent sex, drugs, or rock and roll. Not one right. of us. So how do we get it right? Like, with my, with my children? I just tell them the truth? No, first you need to, and, oh, okay, fine, I'll answer that. I, my kids can know everything about sex, drugs, and rock and roll with me. Mm -hmm. And I was not a good girl. Right. And, you know, um, and I just prefer that I not pretend I have it all together, but what I do know I share. Mm -hmm. So then they know my own real lessons and I, there's no secrets, especially about sex. Right. I, and my daughter who's 16. Um, so I have a daughter who's 16, a son who's 14 and a 10 year old girl. Okay. Right. And they're in wildly different kids. Right. It's awesome. They're, di they're totally different. Right. And so I have, you know, and so, but what I'm very proud of with my 16 year old who, you know, is sexually active, has a boyfriend and really very happy, right? Like happy, happy to talk about it with me, happy to tell me anything, happy to be free. Right. I never had that with my mother. Right. Right. And it didn't make me not have sex when I had sex. Do you understand? It didn't make my mother not have sex when she had sex. Right. It's not like you're going to stop the sex from when that individual is ready to do it. Right. Right. Um, and then my son, right, who's 14 for the, you know, he like there, like I've told him everything. I sat him down, told him absolutely everything just the same. Right. And then I'll ask him, do you want to know, are we, are, do we like girls yet? Right. How do we, where are we? Where are we? 
right? And then, you know, I'll send my husband. I'm like, go have the jerking off talk, right? <laughs> let, let him know it's okay. He doesn't have to feel bad, right? So I, it's like, I know all the heebie-jeebies that happened to me. Yeah. And I'm making sure they're not happening to my children. Right. And then I leave them freedom of choice. And that's the right thing to do. That is, it, is right? I, I, that's what I'm operating I, off of. I would, same pretext, I yeah. would bet my life on that, but someone else can certainly bonk me in the head and tell me I'm crazy. But I'm very happy to be this person. And if I look at my my daughter, she is incredibly awesome and well adjusted and proud of herself as a woman, as beautiful. As, like she right, she's like and she's not kidding me. Right. Right. So 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 far so good. I love that. I mean, that's that's my like fundamental core belief. What you just told me about how my kids are younger. They're nine and well, 10 and almost 10 and 11. Yep. Um, but the way you just described your relationship with your daughter and your son, like that's what I feel it should be. Let, let me tell this. This thing happened yesterday. OK. And I was like, amen. So my daughter got my daughter has two jobs like and she went out and got her own two jobs because she wanted to make money. Okay, nobody made her go get the jobs. No one even gets her to the, the like, she barely gets a ride from us to, mm-hmm. to get to her job, which is very impressive. And she works at this very fancy cheese store because she loves food and all different kinds of interesting things, right? Um, and uh, a 20, she goes, she comes home and she goes, Mama, tw- like this 26 year old guy who's working at the store and getting trained, who's married, hit on me. And I said, I looked at him and said, I was sick. I'm 16. And he said, well, if you don't mind, I don't mind. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm like, isn't, wait, where's the Me Too movement? How come he doesn't understand this is going down fast? Um, anyway, my daughter, not only did she tell her boss, she came home and was proud that she told her boss. Right. Versus like, do you, you know what I mean? Like, yay me. Yay, yeah. women. Like, and literally will tell that story to all her friends on, ew, that guy's sick. He has a problem. Yeah. Right? That's because she understands, like, a, like, I gave her everything she can understand to, to make, to see the world. And she doesn't mean she's not in love with someone. But it's like, it's just, it's the, I think it's the right way to go. Yeah, and I would agree. I mean, there's just something that feels so good about truth in that regard, but not in my own life. Oh, um, <laughs> but I know, I know exactly. Cause it feels so good to be honest with children. It, yes. it just feels so. What clean. are you so scared to tell? What is, come on. What like, do you got? My lies. Come no, Whatever. I what? I've told a ton of my lies. I mean, really? Okay. So the blowjob was 15. Does that make you yeah, happy? <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I, I think it, I just think we should all be liberated. It's not, it's what the dogs do. Yeah. Right. Like who, what are we? And I didn't say it's not making love or something special, but so is a great meal. So is learning, reading a great book. Like, why do we have to be so weird <laughs> about sex? Like, come on, humanity. I think we might want to buck up. Yeah. No, I mean, I like I make it sound like I have all these really sorted, terrible things. And, <laughs> and I don't, I mean, I don't have horrible, horrible things that I don't want to tell, but I have things that I haven't told my parents directly uh, and I, I should have a conversation. Perhaps you're right. Okay. Your mother but either why? likes blowjobs or doesn't. You understand <laughs> she either swallows or she doesn't. Oh right. Gosh. Like, I know I'm just, I'm just messing with your virginity at this point. Like right. of, of like even saying these sentences, right. just so you know, my, my mother who's lived her life Orthodox, right. She swallows. Okay. <laughs> 82 year old woman. It's okay. It's but okay. You know what, Lauren? So if I was talking to you offline and I was yes. talking to a friend, I, w- it would be so different, but just the small chance that my mother listens or God forbid my husband's family listens is why I don't. But anyone okay. that knows me knows that I'm an open okay. book. Does that Do you understand you are a product of sex? Your literal being is because your parents did it. Yes, right? they say that I came okay, from great. my dad's nutsack. Yes. I but you, do you understand? <laughs> I'm sure your dad might have been grabbing your mother at the time, right? Like, what do you think was happening? 
don't think about that. And I bet 85% of the people listening to this don't want to think about that. It, we ha- So because of how distorted sex is in the world, like sex is distorted. People aren't allowed, if a woman wants to be with a woman, if a man wants to be with a man, if you want to try one and then the other, if you want to have more lovers, what, like we have to stop making it such a secret and judgmental and religious it, it's it's going to ruin spirituality. Yeah. No, I agree right? with you there. Yeah. It's it, right. It's so it's just got to stop. And, and the way to we stop were... it is to start telling your own truth. And OK, so let's talk about porn where yeah. since if, if the world was so much more open, like people to people about sex, wh- where does porn fall into all of this? Because obviously a lot of that has driven like us not being honest about sex has driven the porn industry um, um, and a lot of it underground. Right. Or is it, do you think it's not even related? I mean, well, first of porn. all, I, I ease just so you know, I do ready. Everybody yeah. breathe. You look if I'm alone, if I'm alone in a hotel room and I want to get off quickly, I will use porn. Okay. Okay. Everyone. It's like easy fix. I know. Call me a guy. Call me whatever you want. It's true. Okay, I'm not ashamed of it. Now, it, you anyone doing it against their will, or right? Do you understand? Like anyone doing anything against their will, anything on children, anything that's just creepy, and it's connected to this is just like I don't even know where to go. Like I would drop the whole industry only because I don't want children anywhere near it. Right? So there's really wrong. Okay, but then there really are grownups who should be able to do whatever the hell they want. So which, which category are we in? No, I don't, I don't give a rat's ass about porn. Like, I mean, I just, I wonder if. It's just fucking. Right. But a lot of people are replacing intimacy with other people with, with porn. Right. I mean. I mean, they're replacing and with food and with alcohol and like pick your poison. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to know where you fell on the whole thing. Cause it. Um, you're going to. Uh, like, where does that fall into the so lies and the here, intimacy? Here's, and here's how cute. I'll tell you how cute my husband is. My husband is so cute. He always has a porn promise because he doesn't want to use porn instead of sleeping with me. And we've been together, you know, we're on like 22 years, right? And we have a great, you know, we had great sex last night, right? So it's like he does it so... Every man who, you know, if he's committed to his wife, if you're having a great sex life, depending on where you are, it should just be honest between the couple, Mm -hmm. right? Masturbation shouldn't be the strangest subject in the world. It should, right? It should be something you both understand about each other without shaming each other. That Mm -hmm. would be a bit, I'll take that upgrade, right? But you're like, I know, I know the porn my husband likes, I have seen his sites that he like. I am not that girl. I'm not doing that a lot. I don't really care. I swear it's not very often. I just admit it so people understand I am not some goody two shoes. Right. right? And I don't want to lie. So I am to someone else. No, so th- I, I think that's good. And and I think, I guess what I'm trying, to, I don't know what I'm trying to get out, <laughs> but like, <laughs> whatever with porn. If everyone's lying, they're lying about lots of things. So if there really is don't ask, don't tell, policies, right? There's really could be don't ask, don't tell policies. And as long as two people go, oh, we're don't ask, don't tell policies, then there you go. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not that I need everybody to be talking about everything. It's that I need people to know they're not and admit that they're not right. So I know women. Yeah. yeah, It's not my rule is the only rule. It's know each other's rules and know that everything is happening under the sun. Like, please, sex is happening. It's been happening. You know, if your kid is 14 years old, guess what? He's jerking off. What's your girl doing? I don't know. You got to find out. That's also interesting. The odds are, is she jerking off too? Of course she is. Right. So there's, it's like human behavior is not having an original moment. Lying, right. Lying about it all. It would be nice if that was ending. Because real change in the world, I think, happens if we start telling the truth. Real change, real lessons, real evolution. And if it never gets into that and everything still stays underground, right? So, the, you know, it, I, 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 it's not the planet I want to be on. Right. 
right? I prefer people tell the truth and do what they want. And I'll do what I want and tell you the truth. You do what you want and tell me the truth. We're good. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not going to try and make you like me and you don't have to try and make me like you. <laughs> I don't like you anyway. <laughs> right? I am going to, I am going to like poke you that there is very, if you have all these conversations with your parents, I have no idea what will shift energetically in you about some of the purgatories from your addict past. Yeah. That you're met. Like, I, I, you are a very interesting case study for me. Like, I would take that on in a minute. Come on, girl. <laughs> I, know, I know. And I'm, that's what scares me. Because well, like, all the people I, you've helped, I think, like, for me to be interesting, that there, there's probably a lot of fucked up stuff going on. <laughs> it's, it's the, uh, wait a minute. I think the ticket onto the planet is fucked up stuff going on. Yeah. I, I, I think it's the only thing we all have in deep common. Yeah. And then so if you go, right. And then if you go, you know, what's going to be, what is more likely to happen first world peace or, or no more lying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you get which one's coming first. Yeah. Yeah. World peace. Man, it, not, not many people make me speechless. I, <laughs> I remember, I remember the first time I interviewed you, I was the quietest I ever was on a podcast. And this one, you're doing it again to me. Cause it just makes me think like how much it's really interesting that like the addict behavior that yeah. you think having a conversation with my parents would free me of that. Like that makes it worth it. And that terrifies me. Yes. And I think that your whole talking about how you've run your life to please your parents. And, and I know then it's stupid. <laughs> no, that's, it's not stupid. It's not. It's, they ran their lives to please their parents and they ran their lives. It's it like, it, it, it makes sense, right? We did give up. My parents did give up a lot to make me happy. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, so it, it makes a lot of sense. All these things make sense. Um, breaking that kind of barrier for you where you're doing it to go equal with them. Like we're, we're, we're past that point of you're my, you're this pedestal and I'm this, you know, kind of subservient to whatever you guys think versus we're equal. When do you guys get to become equal? Let alone one day you're going to be taking care of that. Like the whole cycle transitions. Right. So if you have a fake weird relationship now, Right. What happens when your dad's a weirdo with his money and you can't say, hey, dad, that's not worth it. Like you, you, you got to get on this girl. Mm-hmm. Right. Because all these transitions have to happen. And the same is true for your parent, for your kids with you. Yeah. Right. The cycle keeps rolling. Well, I know you've probably got to go because it's been like an I hour. Do. I don't want you to go, but I kind of do at the same time. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I want to come back for the conclusion of I spoke oh my to gosh. my parents. I feel like we should have them on, but they would never do it. You First of all, you, <laughs> here's this other thing besides for you don't know when your mother gave her first blood job. Okay. You no also idea. have She's no. She's still a virgin. <laughs> You have, we don't know what your mom really has to say about sex because you've never broken that barrier. Right. You don't like, right. Like really sit down and go, Hey, this is what I'm doing with my kids. Why did you do what you did? What's your real story? Who was the first love? Who was the first guy you ever kissed? Your mom had a first kiss. Yeah. I don't know who. Right. Like you're, you're forgetting she was a girl. Mm -hmm. She, you're forgetting she had butterflies. You're like, you don't know your mommy's story. It's way more romantic than you're like, it's rigid and Catholic. <laughs> no, I think it's great. I mean, I, I do. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm speechless. <laughs> All right. Okay. So before you go real quick, um, you have the online program. Tell, tell me <gasps> what oh. you got. We didn't talk about what you got. So if you're still listening to me and I haven't <laughs> horrified you, because <laughs> birds of a feather right. flock together so everybody here is like not my parents no. okay i, know, I felt it, like this whole episode was about me but i feel like everyone else is going to be nodding along oh at home. <laughs> oh come birds on of a feather. birds of a feather um but if you actually want to go deep into yourself and really understand yourself, love yourself, free yourself from your lies and dream and understand my method inner you Um, is the program that I've been building and it's digital and it has the homework and you can meet other people and it's getting social and you can get a coach, right? It's like the thing I've been building, you know, thank God for modern technology. Um, And you could just go to my site 
and sign up for it. Um, and if you buy it now, you get this discount for real because I just re-recorded the whole damn thing after, like uh, again to make it even better, I swear. Um, but it's been great for the last four years. Anyway, guys. Anyway, yes. inner you. Yay! Yeah, and I've got like a promo code, but I'll put that at the beginning of the recording. Thank so, you. Lauren, thank you so Aww. much. You are so Oh, my much God. Fun. I have to come back for the conclusion. You oh know that, gosh. right? I want to come I'm back. I'm sitting here. It's like 40 degrees and I'm sweating. Oh, I want to talk to your mommy. I swear to God. If you're this, just so you know, if you're this cool, it, you can't tell me you didn't get it from your parents too. Somewhere. Yeah, my mom's really cool. The The older, now they're, the older she gets and the older I get, we, we are getting closer. Like she tells me things, but the, yeah, I'm going to have to sit down. I'm telling you, you're the, you're, you, there, this might be shocking and exciting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Shocking and exciting. Well, have okay. a beautiful day, Lauren. Thank Talk you. Soon. Bye, everybody. Uh, bye. For listeners of this podcast, I have a special coupon code for you guys for the Inner You online digital coaching course. You will get $75 off with this link that I will include in the show notes. So you can use the code same 24 hours 75 and that same 24, the number hours 75, also number in all caps for $75 off a subscription level at checkout. Go to interu.coach to register and there'll be more information up in the show notes. So check those out.